Hello everyone, this is Dr. Juwan. I'm going to answer an email question and that is, how come when I take hydrochloric acid to help build up the acid in my stomach and in addition to apple cider vinegar, because they heard that apple cider vinegar is really good to help balance out the pH of the stomach, why does my stomach burn after I take it? If you're new to my channel, thank you for watching. If you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button down below and right next to it is the bell notification because when I upload videos like this, You'll be first to be notified through the email lovely system. Facebook fans, I always appreciate a growing audience. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like button down below. And both, if you find this information valuable, please share with a friend. If you have any comments, please leave them down below. And if you want to schedule me for a 15 minute consultation, please follow the links. I'll be more than happy to sit down with you, either a phone conversation or Zoom. I'll be more than happy to see if I could help you out. Meantime, enjoy the video. Thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna answer a question. When I take hydrochloric acid as a supplement and or apple cider vinegar to help balance out the pH of my stomach, my stomach burns. Why is that? Well, what happens is that you have what's called atrophic gastritis. Now, when I explain how the stomach works, the stomach is like this big mixing pot, okay? And you have these certain cells in this mixing pot that needs to balance out the pH properly because if it does not balance out the pH properly, you may have bloating, gas, diarrhea, undigested foods, you may not be breaking down the proteins effectively, your side effect may be anemia because you're not absorbing the B12, or you may have GERD, you may have acid reflux, it all depends on what the symptoms are. But when it comes down to the solution is that your stomach is a muscle and it needs to function on a proper pH between one and three. Meaning that one and three is very, very acidic. And when that pH is balanced properly, what happens is that we have, I always say we have a porthole. We have a porthole on the top of our stomach that closes, okay, that shuts down to prevent the acid from creeping up the esophagus, which will give you GERD or acid reflux or bloating or burpees or things like that. So what happens is that we have these certain cells in our stomach, parietal cells, which helps produce hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid is needed. I'll get to that in a second. But we also have these mucus cells that secrete a mucus layer in addition to bicarbonate, which will help balance out the pH of the stomach contents so you're not passing too acidic foods through the small intestines. Now, the function of, of hydrochloric acid, okay, one, it helps break down proteins. We break down proteins in our stomach and we absorb them through the small intestines. So we have these cells that secrete pepsin, which helps break down the, the proteins. Also, the hydrochloric acid in the stomach, it acts as a cleaner. It kills bacteri bacteria. When we take in food products, remember, our immune system begins where? In the mouth. So when we take in these foods, yes, these foods are bad for our system, so we need to break down and denature these proteins so they don't harm the system. And that's another reason why we need the hydrochloric acid. In addition, it helps absorb minerals. It helps lower the pH of the chyme in the stomach. Chyme is our food. When we ingest food, we chew it up, we, it's in our stomach. It helps lower the pH because when it goes to the small intestines, and when I mean lowers, lowers the pH, it gets the pH between one and three. Our pH scale is one, very acidic, seven, neutral, 14, very alkaline. We don't like alkaline foods. We like our, the environment of our stomach and our small intestines to be between one and three. That's very, very acidic. And so, when it, enter, so it allows it to, enter, to lower the pH, so when it goes to the small intestines, the small intestines can further break down and absorb the nutrients through our pancreas secreting digestive enzymes to help break down proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. But in addition to, it secretes bicarbonate. So bicarbonate neutralizes, brings meaning that it lowers the pH between one and three. Why is that necessary? Because if we don't have the proper pH in the stomach between one and three, then what's gonna happen once it gets through the small intestines, it's gonna to be too acid or let's say not acid enough between one and three, or two alkaline, I'm sorry, two alkaline. And I mean alkaline, anything above three, let's say 3.5, four, 4.5, so forth and so on. 
because you could have a lot of bacterial pathogens, parasitic pathogens, and viral pathogens that will infect the GI system because you don't have the proper hydrochloric acid to start breaking all that stuff down. So why do you have that burning in the stomach? Well, the burning in the stomach is called acute gastritis. And that what happens is that you have a thinning of that gut lining wall. Remember, we have these cells in our stomach that secrete mucus. And the mucus acts as a protective barrier and also secretes bicarbonate. So what happens is that when you are not in proper health for your stomach, if that pH is not between one and three, it starts to break that down. It starts, I always say, it starts to dry up. What happens if you leave like a piece of meat or something like that out in the sun? It starts to dry up like a beef jerky. Well, that's your stomach. So that protective membrane is drying up acute, uh, atrophic gastritis. There's many causes of, of this condition. The most common is H. pylori. H. pylori is the most common bacteria that lives. It lives in the stomach, stomach and it likes an alkaline environment. In addition, long-term uses of uh, NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory anti drugs. Why? Especially aspirin, Tylenol, all that stuff. It inhibits the mucus cells from secreting that nice mucus la uh, layer in your stomach. In addition, alcohol, autoimmune diseases, stress, stress by far. What, what stress does, when you have too much stress, it inhibits those mucus cells from secreting the proper amount of mucus for a nice environmental bed in our stomach. This is why in times of stress, we get a lot of GI problems. And just, well, GERD, anti-acid use. Anti-acid use is not good, good for long-term use, but also anti, we don't need anti-acid. What we need is actually more acid to bring the stomach down between a one and three. And this to bulimia. So how do you diagnose this? You could diagnose it. I usually with patients, I send them out for blood work. I want a comprehensive blood panel. But in addition, you could have a urea breath test. Now a urea breath test, you breathe, and it registers the increased concentration of carbon dioxide. And that is an indicator of H. pylori infection. In addition, stool testing. Yes, you could do stool testing. You'll send it away to a lab and they'll send me the results. And that will definitely give a diagnosis of a presence of H. pylori and the amount. Because we all have H. pylori, it all, it all equates to the amount of the bacteria that we have that could be healthy or unhealthy. What do you do? Well, first and foremost, it's always diet. Correct the diet. The diet is very, very key. You want to eliminate the soft drinks, the coffee, the alcohol, the sugars, the dairies, all that stuff that ruin the, the lining anyways. So in addition, you want to do diet modification. Now, there's a lot of diets out there, but the key thing, if you're going to do, if you're going to research the diet, you want the diet that is very, very clean. And that is from when I, when I've registered, when I've done my research is the Mediterranean diet. The Mediterranean diet is basically the most, most healthy per se to help correct gastritis, well, atrophic gastritis, because it's filled with high antioxidant foods, which high antioxidant foods will lower the inflammation in the stomach. In addition, water. Now, water is key. Yes, I understand we want to drink water with food. However, Try to drink as little as possible while, while you're eating. Why is that? Because, remember, the stomach needs to have, be a proper pH between one and three for the enzymes to work. When you flush out the tummy with a bunch of water, it throws off the balance of the pH. And what that does, that inhibits those enzymes from working. So the stomach is not doing its job. It's like putting a cement, like the cement mixer the cement mixer needs all those chemicals in there to churn the concrete. Imagine just dumping a bunch of water in there. It makes the chemicals unbalanced. So what's going to happen is that you're going to, you're going to get anemia because it's broken down in the stomach. Proteins are broken down in the stomach. You're going to have loss of calcium. You're going to have loss of zinc. You're going to have loss of magnesium. So you need to supplement with all these supplements, B12, iron, 
calcium, magnesium, zinc, these are all phenomenal for not only as an anti-inflammatory, but in addition to how the body works, the muscular system works as a whole. Glutamine, garlic, omega-3 fatty acids, probiotics, you want to help reestablish that, that proper bacterial bed with probiotics. In addition to licorice root, licorice root is phenomenal to help calm down the inflammation of the stomach lining. What also can you do is this, very, very important. Hydro, you can take the uh, supplement hydrochloric acid and digestive enzymes. Now, I always recommend not to take them together. You want to separate it because you want to dose it. Remember, you're not making enough pH. Your pH is not between one and three. This is what's causing this irritation, acute gastritis. I'm sorry, atrophic gastritis, because what you want to do, you want to repair the, the mucosal line in the wall. But in the meantime, you got to eat. So when it comes to hydrochloric acid and enzyme, it's dose specific, okay? So I always say, again, you don't want to take this forever. Your goal is not to be on these forever. Your goal is to fix the situation, get back on track, and just keep on going. So with hydrochloric acid, I recommend, okay, so like on Monday, let's do one pill three times a day. In addition to with enzymes, let's do one capsule three times a day with food. And you want to increase it. Are you experiencing symptoms? No. Okay, then the next day, let's do two pills three times a day. And with the enzymes, two capsules three times a day. Because the enzymes are going to help break down the food. The HCL is going to help repair how the stomach works. So you want to keep on dosing it. Next day, let's do three pills three times a day of the hydrochloric acid and, of course, with the digestive enzymes. Are you experiencing symptoms? Gas, bloating, etc. Yes? Okay, let's back down. Let's back down the hydrochloric acid. Because with the digestive enzymes, if you're, if you're noticing an improvement, okay, let's stay right there. So with the digestive enzymes, you want to increase it when you're noticing, okay, you're noticing an improvement in digestion, but also you want to watch the, hydrochlor the hydrochloric acid. So if you do get symptoms, okay, let's lower it, okay? So I hope this helps. Yeah, atrophic gastritis is very, very, it's more common. I see a lot of this. I, tr I work with a lot of patients to help ease their symptoms and correct the situation. So if you have any comments, please leave them down below. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Be good.